<laughs> Hello, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to join on stage where I'm going to be uh, in two days uh, presenting people, speakers uh, every other half an hour. And now it's time for the first speaker, and uh, it's uh, Desmi, the main sponsor for Don't Shipping Meat that will start. Um, the heading is a case story regarding retrofit of ballast water management systems one, uh, on one of Sirius ships. Therefore, Desmi has invited just Sirius. And Sirius Shipping is, um, or it was founded by the Backman family here at Donsö. As you know, Donsö has a long, long history of maritime commerce and shipping where Sirius plays a leading role. So please welcome Technical Manager and New Building Manager at Sirius Shipping, Anders Beire and Rasmus Fölsö. Desmi! Fölsö. Fölsö. Yes. <laughs> Thank you uh, and welcome to this presentation. Uh, this was a presentation slot that, uh, that Desmi has, but uh, we thought actually that the time uh, best spent here would be to uh, let one of our good customers uh, present their experience with working with Desmi in a retrofit project of uh, ballast water management systems. I would say, as uh, Anders Bayer will also uh, illustrate, it's a, it's a big project to retrofit a ballast water management system. It requires quite a lot of support from the supplier of the uh, equipment. And moreover, I think it's, it's a really uh, complicated and challenging because of the nature of the market for ballast water management system, where we go from very low activity a couple of years ago to extremely high uh, activity now. And in uh, two years from now, the activity level will go again because then uh, retrofit is done. So that's a huge demand uh, on uh, suppliers to be able to scale up and scale down. Um, but I will... Uh, Hand over the word to uh, Anna Speyer and uh, thank for the for the good collaboration we have and we look forward to hear how your experience is working with Desmi. Thank Thanks. you, Rasmus. I will stay here in the light. I've been learned. Uh, Rasmus, uh, thank you for the invitation and uh, also thank you for being the main sponsor of the DSM number 7, 2022. My name is Anders Beire. I'm technical manager from CDU Shipping. Um, with this presentation, I will give you an overview of how it can look with a ballast water treatment retrofit installation. The process started two years ago, and it was because of regulations. We had a lot of discussions with uh, Desmi, sale manager, and um, about 50 mails was going to and from Desmi and also to other makers during uh, the negotiations. It was not so much commercial negotiation during that time, it was more technical discussions and uh, find a good solution. We also shared information uh, between the other companies on Donsö. And uh, finally, we had eight companies that was included in the Donsö group. It was Dunse Tank, Oljula, Viretas Tankes, Elf Tank, Fulu Tank, Ten Tank, Kill Tank, and Sirius. And continuously we shared update information about technical solutions from the different involved makers. And um, this group included 29 vessels at the time. And uh, each company had their own schedule based on the IOPP. Uh, certificate, time for renewal, and also for the planned dockings. Finally, we find out that uh, we want to continue with DESMI, and we had an agreement in September 2020. So the time is passing very fast. The possibility to receive a package in different types, like the standard, like the low ski type, 
You can also have in pieces and uh, also containerized, but I don't think containerized was actual for any of other vessels, but uh, to have this flexibility, it was an advantage and I also think a good reason for why we were choosing, one of the reasons for why we are choosing Desmi as a maker. Because uh, to make an installation in a small vessel as a retrofit is a challenge. So, so have this flexibility, it was really good. And the sizes of the, the capacity of the units was around 500 to 750 for the most of the vessels. This is the schedule, how it looks for Sirius during that time. And today we have finalized Scorpius. Scorpius was the first vessel as we did in Falkvarv, in Falkenberg. Then we had Olympus, Tellus and Nautilus at Fayard. And just for a month ago, some month ago, Lexus at Falkenberg. And it was a 340 installation, loose equipment. It was a real challenge, a narrow area. So, I want to show you some uh, photos from the installation, how it can look like. And it's not only from Scorpius, it's also from the other vessels. So I can show a little from two different shipyards. Otherwise, maybe some of them will be angry on me. So I take Scorpius first. Falkvar. You can see it's very simple. You just open up a cover on the side shell. You're lifting in the new unit down with the main cabinet. The manager of the shipyard is very happy and we start up the system and the vessel can leave. It's very easy with the Desmi system. <laughs> but in true, it is a huge job. It involves several systems. You can imagine the feeling to have 50 persons running around, cut systems, opening panels in the accommodations, trays of cables, opening in bulkheads for penetrations of cables. It's a disaster. They actually destroy your vessel of only one reason to install this fantastic equipment. It was a good word, Rasmus, huh? <laughs> but you can see we had HMI installed, foundations. This is Olympus of Fayard. And during that time, it was only approved, the system was only approved for US Coast, US Coast Guard mode. So that's why we run full capacity 324 at the commissioning. But we had this uplink module, so later on we received the file and could add it to the system to 500 and upgrade to 500 cubes per hour. And we left the shipyard with a D2 certificate for ballast motor management certificates. Yeah. It can look like that two days before departure, we can have uh, almost a half tons of piping on the key side. So there's a normal press to synchronize the work at the end, both to receive the commissioning engineer and also to, to deal with the charter department regarding when we can be at the next harbor because there is always a voyage and they're asking for lake and so on. Here are some photos from the installation as well. Access holes in the bottom to reach the double bottom tanks because it's not only to install this unit, it's also necessary to cut up the existing system, the ballast system, to make the installation. And then you also have to modify the automation system to include the new pipings and the position of the unit in the system. We remove a lot of steel as well, even if we add about five tons totally. With five tons, I mean new piping, 
the unit itself. The vessel, we have some vessel not having automation system and then the, in those cases we had to modify the ballast water mimic table as well. And here we have a happy pipe foreman, Tommy Holm at Fayard, when we're finally waiting for the unit to be installed in the room. It's also very tricky to lift this sensitive equipment. The heart is uh, almost uh, close to stop sometimes when they're lifting and you know it's moving and and these tough workers on the shipyard they they uh, they know what to do but uh, it, it's going quite tough sometimes. When you have an automation system you can build up the logical system for uh, bypass functions. But for the older vessel, we have to install uh, digital grids with a relay and build up all combinations in the existing valve system that can trigger a bypass. And this is a function that needs to be approved both by classification society, but also by the administration. And it's included in the ballast water management plan as well. Now here we can see the installation in uh, Nautilus. And here we run the system in Nautilus at the commissioning. And uh, Nautilus was the first vessel that we had commissioning with, with IMO version from the beginning. So we run with 500 cubes per hour. So, I have touched with uh, what it means You have draft drawings in the beginning. Then you have to visit the vessel to see if it is possible to do to follow these drafts. You have an integration plan. You had the design approval by class. You had to submit a lot of plans and drawings to them. It's about 10 of them and you have 10 documents explaining what to do. You have a yard specification that has to be built up. You have a yard stay, you have a crew education, you have a commissioning, and you have the class on site. And not at least, you have to follow up the function together with the crew. So it's a big process to go through. So, our experience based on five retrofit installation in operation. Of course, we can see that some a lot of things, the most of the thing is working fantastic together with ESME, but there is also some items that we really think can be improved to make it also more easy for both parts. One big advantage to the system, it is, it doesn't matter what system you install, but to have the same kind of system in your fleet is a big advantage because the crew learn to operate the system and they feel safe with it. Uh, the support from Desme during the process has been really, really good. I'm really happy for that. Because it's, as you understand, it is a big job and uh, yeah, it's a high press during the process. We have received very skilled commissioning engineers. And it, it is really important because there is so many puzzles, pieces of puzzles to be put together during the last two days. So the relation between the commissioning engineer, the shipyard, the crew on board, and the responsible from the owner is so important that everybody understands how important it is to come to a successful end. And it doesn't matter how good system a maker supply if it not is installed on the correct way. It's really, really important that everybody understand the shipyard and the people who design and integrate in the existing system. What we can see could, be, could, could create a more easy part for us working with the classification society. It is if we can receive from DESME a ship-specific documentation. 
not covering all sizes, all classification, uh, yeah, societies and so on. A ship specific telling this is, congratulations, you have now bought this system with a serial number, blah, blah, blah. And this is what you need for using DNV or for using B, B, BV or whatsoever. It could save a lot of time for us. Also, if the system that leaves the factory really have the correct settings for, for the software, configurations from the EX modules, and so on. Because then it's also more easy if you, of some reason, not have the very best skilled commissioning engineers. They don't, they don't have uh, any problem. It's more simple for them to start up the system. And finally, we have also faced some capacity problem in non-expected waters, uh, in, in, in like Venn and, and like in, in like uh, Melaren. And, and um, I'm happy now that we have received a good feedback from Desmi to try to solve this and figure out what is the reason. So yesterday they downloaded data via the uplink module from, uh, from one of the vessels. Just analyze and so on. So this uplink unit is fantastic just to very easy and fast can find the reason. So let us see what's coming out of that. This is little related to what Mr. Simonson said yes, uh, later today, uh, earlier today as well. I fully understand that it is important to have a ballast water treatment unit installed in all vessel trading globally, to have unlimited trade without any restrictions. But I also want to point out that to operate each unit on board, it costs energy. And energy means CO2 emissions. For our vessels, it means about 600 tons of CO2 release yearly. Just to operate unit in our trade, because we have so many harbors. About This is calculated based on 80 voyages per year. For some vessels, they even have 100. And you need to operate the, the unit both ways, both when you ballast and deballast. And you cannot use gravity like before and so on. So it's even more than those figures I have presented here. But finally, as long as we need to use it, we have to do it. But I really hope that it could be some areas if we are operating between Sweden, Denmark and so on in future. It should not be necessary to use it. But let us see, it's, it's nothing between the maker of such a unit or us, it's, it's a government thing, so, or IMO. But we, as long as we need to use it, we are happy to have this fantastic equipment installed. And we are really happy for fantastic support. Thank you very much for that. Oh, stay, stay with me, Anders. Come on. I have some questions for you, actually. Yes. <laughs> uh, you, but but you I heard turn me off now. Ah, now I'm no. back again. Oh. You are, uh, you have been the, the, the contact, uh, with the technical contact, you can say, in the process between uh, Desmi and Dunsu Group. What does that mean? The well, actually, I have had the contact with Desmi during the process, and I shared all information with the rest of the uh, companies in the group yes. continuously before we took the decision mm -hmm. about to go for a specific maker like Desmi this time. So yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is actually not anything new for the Dunse group. Sometimes we are competitors, and sometimes we work together. That's really the so thing, yep, isn't yep. it? Has there been any disturbance uh, when you had this installation system? To have what? To no, have the, the, the installed system. Did you have any no, disturbance? No, very. You, you said some, some plus and minus, but... Yeah, but this was more for the process, right? Mm -hmm. for, uh, for the tech, for the tech, from the technical point of view, I can say that we have uh, one crack in one uh, UV lamp holder, so it's, it's almost nothing, and, and we... 
we can face now that it was quite long a time go ago since we did the first installation. Time is mm. passing very fast. Yes. So it's uh, almost nothing we can say. Mm. It's almost like a, like a declaration of love uh, between you and, and Desmi. But and the shipyard who installed it, because it's really, really important to have a good installation. Yes. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what you install. It will be a disaster anyway. Of course. Mm. It's a collaboration between many parts. It is. Yes. Yep. But did you receive good support from Desmi? Yep. That's du during the whole process. The, the In, even answer. if I'm worried to the last minute if I will receive a service a, a commissioning engineer or not, mm. because they are very occupied. <laughs> but it has always ended up very good. Yes, but if you if you should say something to other other people who who may might want to install the system, is it is it uh, uh, hard to operate the system? No, it's very easy. It's very easy. I'm I'm always worried when when after installation in a new vessel because. You, how will they react on this? And you know, some some person is really conservative and so on. But uh, you had to implement the system the right way. Uh, yeah. You had to discuss with the crew what it means and why we do it and so on in the early stage, and also send out the information about how to operate it and so on. You cannot come the last day. You must work a couple of months before you install it, to, to so so you really have. A team. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anders Beide, Sirius Shipping, and uh, Desmi, Rasmus Folse. Thank you so much. Thank you.